Teacher! Teacher! I bet you look upon my son. Please, please help him. For he's my only child. I beg your disciples to cast it out. But they could not. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long am I to be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. Teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks will receive. And he who seeks will find. And the door will be open to anyone who knocks. <laughs> Would any of you who are fathers give to your son a snake when he asks for a fish, or a scorpion when he asks for an egg. As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more, then, will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I tell you this. Take no thought in your life for what you shall eat, nor for your body what you shall wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap, have neither storehouse nor barn. Yet God feeds them. Of how much more worth are you than the birds? Which of you, by being anxious, can add to the length of your life? You cannot do such a small thing. Why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like a single one of them. If God, who clothes the wild grass today, which tomorrow is thrown onto a fire, how much more sure is he to clothe you Oh, you of little faith. Make our faith greater. If you had faith as big as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, pull yourself up by the roots and plant yourself in the sea, and it would obey you.
Temptations to sin are sure to come. But woe to him by whom they come. It would be better for him if a stone were put about his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. What is the kingdom of God like? It is like this. A man takes a grain of mustard seed and plants it in his field. The plant grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make their nests in its branches. I'm not sure what he's talking about. <laughs> Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and other outcasts? <laughs> People who are well do not need a doctor, but only those who are sick. I have not come to call respectable people to repent, but outcasts. <laughs> Tell us again about the kingdom. Is there anything else? Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell all your belongings and give the money to the poor. Provide for yourselves purses that don't wear out and save your riches in heaven where they will never decrease. Because no thief can get to them and no moth can destroy them. For your heart will always be where your riches are. Woman, you are free from your sickness. Look! Look, she's cured! It's a miracle! It's a miracle. Look, she's cured! It's a miracle! Praise to the Lord! God keep you, Rabbi. There are six days in which we should work, so come on one of those days to be healed, but not on the Sabbath. You hypocrites! Any one of you would untie his ox or his donkey and take it out from the stall to give it water on the Sabbath. Now here is this descendant of Abraham whom Satan has kept in bonds these 18 years. Should she not be released on the Sabbath? Good teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? Why do you call me good? No one is good save God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not commit murder. Do not accuse anyone falsely. Respect your mother and your father. Ever since I was young, I have obeyed all these commandments. There is still one more thing you need to do. You must sell all you have and give the money to the poor and you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. But we are merchants, wealthy. How hard it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. It is harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Who then can be saved? What is impossible for man is possible for God. Exactly where will this be? God's kingdom. The kingdom of God does not come in such a way as to be seen. No one will say, look, there it is or here it is. Because the kingdom of God is within you. The time will come when you will wish that you could see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. As the lightning flashes across the sky and lights it up from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be on his day. But first he must suffer much and be rejected by the people of this day.
It is easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the smallest detail of the law to be done away with. For I tell you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. What should we do? What do the scriptures say? How do you interpret them? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. You're right. Do this and you'll live. Who is my neighbor? Not those soldiers. Yes. What, what about, about Caesar? Gentiles there was once a man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when robbers attacked him, stripped him, beat him, leaving him half dead. It so happened that a priest came that way. When he saw the man, he walked by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite also came there, went over and looked at the man, and then walked by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was traveling on that road came across the man, and when he saw him, his heart was filled with pity. He went over to the man, poured oil and wine on his wounds and bandaged them. Then he put him on his own animal and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he gave the innkeeper two silver coins and he told him to look after the man. And when I come back, he said, I will pay you whatever else you spend on him. Which one of these three acted like a neighbor towards the man who was attacked by the robbers? The one who was kind to him. <laughs> you then do the same. <laughs> ah. Suffer the little children to come unto me and do not forbid them. Of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. Whoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For he who is least among you all is the greatest. of Nazareth. He's passing by. Oh. <laughs> Jesus! Oh. Jesus! <laughs> Son of David, have mercy on me! What do you want me to do for you? I want to see again. Then see. Your faith has made you well. I can see. I can see. I can see. Did you lose him? 